but we now want to cross over uh, to the county hall where Madam Julian Cherera is being vetted by the parliamentary uh, committee in regards to IEBC. But uh, allow me to appreciate Zekie Zextet, uh, Danny, Danny, you're saying you're locked. Uh, BBI is a Kenyan past. Uh, Diana Colond, you're saying BBI was a political uh, conmanship and betrayal. Uh, and they say they reject it as well. But of course, uh, we will be sampling more of your responses, Caroline Otieno. You are also watching live from uh, from Nairobi. Let's first of all cross over and hear what the vetting is all about. Uh, we're not done. Uh, I think uh, those are the gaps that are there in the commission. So, upon uh, being um, given this uh, job, we will do it. We will fast track. Uh, I said that I am trained to uh, do a result management offices. Uh, these are the things that need to be fast track so that now in the next after five years we won't have such gaps that are legally binding. Uh, the question about quorum and the ruling that uh, just happened, yes, we are going to review the things that have been agreed by the commissioners that have been there, everything we will want them to put on the table so that now we can um, we can get back to them and revisit every decision that has been made and more so the decisions that are going to affect this current election has to be done by the full quorum so that we don't give a gap that come elections and the results are announced we are revisited with this question back there. So I will propose that everything that concerns the urgent need of this general election is brought on the table and discussed and agreed amongst the seven commissioners that will be appointed. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question that she never answered yes, yes, about yes. technology. It's been a, the weakest point when it comes to is Austria mission. Now that she has a background in IT, what does she intend to do so that uh, these issues don't keep on cropping up time and again? And number two, about enabling the diaspora votes to be counted during the national election. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me correct, I don't have a background in ICT. My background is education and management. The ICT is the basic ICT that we know that helps any manager to do operations. Yes, not the technical aspect of ICT. Uh, for diaspora. Diaspora. diaspora votes, uh, voters, yes, it is their fundamental right that they should be given the opportunity to vote, and we will endeavor to ensure that they will participate in these uh, elections. And uh, this is a continuous process so that continuously we built up on our database on the diaspora voters that they are continually uh, registered as voters and continually uh, we clean up the register. So that is uh, what I will propose. Very well. Uh, now, uh, yes, we uh, can a bit of your time, but uh, let me uh, make two comments before you we release you. Now, or in the event that you are taken on board, do you think this country, in matters uh, elections, do you think this country require or need a law to regulate campaigns? in the sense that uh, we have a uh, unchecked cycle of being in campaign mood from year to year uh, that uh, we need a restriction timelines say three months one month for a particular election before you mount a potential candidate mounting a campaign that may go to certify the economy in the life of the people, right? And they split it to a particular timeline.
Você não quer viver? Me dá um número, não Do you think it will be possible to eliminate voter registration, voter register that uh, a Kenyan just walks in with a Huduma number and votes without the meandering going through the process of voter register because the constitution says a Kenyan citizen is entitled to vote. Don't you think there may be a time when um, the voter register becomes populous, that you only need a Uduma number to walk in when a voting uh, station and vote? Thank you. Mm, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I support that there is need to regulate the campaigns and the timing and uh, so that our social economic uh, environments are not interfered with. So yes, we should have uh, a regulation that will bar people from misbehaving and tampering with our norm during uh, election period and especially when the time of campaigns come. Uh, for the Huduma number uh, to be used as uh, the voters uh, card, yes, to make work easy. Once you are registered and you have your Huduma number, yes, I'm looking forward to that time that we can just use that. And because you're above 18 and it is your right to vote, when you appear, you can vote. And it should be so connected that you cannot go and vote in another polling station. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, there any other concern? No. Uh, okay, to here now, we are we congratulating you again. And um, wish you well. We will consider all the matters that uh, relate to you with our betting and uh, to see whether we will approve you. Members will deliberate on, uh, on you. You are very progressive uh, ideas. I wish you luck and hope you also move away from Mombasa. Here is you are going to be. A Kenyan in totality, and then, <laughs> of course you are become an ambassador for the coast region. And thank you very much. Mm. You are a listener. Thank you, Chair. That is the first candidate of the four proposed to take up the vacant IEBC commissioner's post, Madam Juliana Cherera there. And we are now crossing over to hear Francis Madenge Wanderi, who is being vetted by the Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs. Thank you so much for watching. Done properly. It's done. So I have the organizational capacity, I have the experience in campaigns, I have the one, uh, the, I'll be able to deliver that to the IBC. Thank you. The other one about the last election, some, some commissioners leaving the country. Uh, I think I'm patriotic enough. I consider the departure referred to by honorable member uh, as cowardice. And I think those of us who love this nation should be here, sort out our problems here, instead of going to shout about our problems elsewhere. So my view is that um, uh, I'm patriotic, and I would consider that kind of act as not quite patriotic. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, Moishu, you Thank you, Chair. Um, so, Andari, as Kenyans, we do appreciate the fact that our IBC is uh, seemingly looking transparent, uh, particularly when it comes to by, um, having our votes counted uh, in the voting uh, centers, polling centers. Uh, however, we've had
had problems with transmission in this republic. In that light, uh, what is your view on Kenyans are candidates in particular having their telling centers, their own telling centers, and the media, because we have a media that has, has threatened things. What is your view on the media having their own telling center rather than um, while waiting for uh, the main telling, IBC telling uh, center to give us results? Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I want to say first uh, congratulations for your nomination and coming this far in the process. Um, one, I just wanted to ask, I don't know if I, I, I missed it, maybe what kind of businesses uh, are you engaged in? And secondly, um, after IBC approved the BBI signature, uh, some Kenyans argued that uh, it was erroneous because uh, IBC didn't have a physical register of signatures. Do you think IBC can um, maintain a signature of registers or have one? And if so, uh, how can IBC go about it? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Wanderi, I have two brief questions. One, uh, from your CV, uh, you've been a, a consultant for many companies. You've also indicated right now you're still a management uh, consultant and you're also in uh, private businesses. Uh, my understanding of the role of a commission of IEBC is a uh, full-time engagement. Uh, how do you intend to manage uh, the businesses that you've been running while still running? Uh, if, if you succeed for approval, for appointment, how will you manage the two? Number two, uh, there are numerous uh, spoilt votes in every election. Does it, does it worry you as it, it does worry me? And if you qualify for, if, if you are approved by parliament for appointment for the position of a commissioner, what will you do? to reduce the number of votes that are usually spoiled in every election which run into hundreds of thousands at the national level. Thank you. Um, you have Kaluma. Mwishimua Kaluma, do you have any question? Mwishimua Kaluma on the ring. Well, answer this question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair and the Honourable Members. I will start with the last question about the sport votes. I, I, I have hold the view that uh, the cause of the sport votes is mostly has to do with the level of voter education and uh, civic education that the Kenyans get. And one of the mandates of IBC is to ensure that there's proper voter education. And uh, IBC using the partners, because there are very many people who would be willing, stakeholders who would be willing to work with IBC, including organizations like the churches and water view, should undertake. And I intend that if I'm appointed to IBC, I will do my best to ensure that we have voter education that helps the voter to be able to understand where and how to put the mark. Uh, I don't think there is 
anybody who comes from his house to come and uh, spoil a vote. So they do so because they do not know. So that ignorance has to be breached. And that's the responsibility of IBC. Uh, the other one about managing uh, the various jobs, I am a director in a company called Roots Credit Limited. It's not a full-time job, so that we will learn because uh, we have other directors. And my consultancy, I would wish to currently stop because the job of IBC is enormous and it is important to focus on it without other distractions. I, I wish to, to, to state that to this committee. Uh, and that has to do also with the question that the Honorable Members had about the, my businesses I'm engaged in. Now, about the signatures which the Honorable Member has asked, um, right now, we are identifying, you are identified through your sub. So the issue of signatures because of technology is going to be obsolete. So, there's probably, we have to follow the law as it is now, and they're using technology, see which areas we need to adjust so that we can make any engagement of identifying the people who have supported or registered uh, using the technology. And I think that is the way to go, that's the way the world is going, and that would be the best way to, to look at that. Um, on the issue of tarring centers, I think the law is clear that it's only an IBC that can have a tallying center. And as we execute the mandate which would be given when we are appointed, we would want to follow the law to the letter. And if there are any changes in terms of that law, this committee and honorable members will be coming to you to ask to change the law where it needs to be changed for any particular reason. So I would want to see a very close working relationship between IBC and this committee in terms of developing laws that are going to guide this nation forward in elections. In terms of transmission of um, results, I, I would expect probably learning from what we saw last time and the failures that we saw last time. I would expect probably by now, IBC has already identified the, weak, the weakness in terms of technology and have developed ways of sorting it out. If they have not, probably that would be one of the first assignments that we must undertake. Because uh, technology can fail, but then if it fails, what are the provisions? And that provisions, they have to be within the law. So I'm looking at it from a point of view that IBC by now must have done that. We have not done, we, are, we, we need to do it as a matter of urgency and as a matter of priority, so that we do not have the kind of thing we saw last time happening again. Thank you, Chair. All right, I think, uh, do you have uh, any yeah, chair. chair, I want to ask the Mr. Wanderi two issues. Number one, Mr. Wanderi, as you are aware, you are joining the IEBC, which has uh, suffered some credibility crisis for some time now because of the elections that were nullified by the courts, the repeat elections, some commissioners left office, and they stayed, they stayed without commissioners for almost three years now. What do you think you're going to do differently when you join that commission at this point in time? My second question, which is more important, is uh, as you're aware, there was a ruling of the appeal court three days ago, uh, precisely on Friday, I think. And the court found out that uh, IEBC had no quorum and they had no mandate to do any policy work in that, in that uh, commission. What will you do, or what is your view? Will you consider it as an illegality, the work that was done from that time when there was no quorum, in around 2018, April, up to today? What is your view about that? 
Uh, thank you, Chair and the Honourable Member. Uh, let me start by credibility crisis. It is common knowledge, and it is in, it's, it's, it's in all of us that uh, there are issues of credibility at IBC, and particularly arising from last election. Uh, one, I hold the view that for IBC to build its credibility, it needs to engage with all the stakeholders. And that includes the political parties and the leaders of the political parties. Because even as we talk about the independence of IBC, it has to take into account that it is not operating as an island. It is operating within a political system and a government system. And the views that the customers, and I consider the stakeholders, the political parties, the agents of government that work with IBC, as the customers, we must, as IBC, be ready to serve them and serve their interest in the best way possible. So for us to build the credibility of IBC, we needed to engage all the stakeholders. That is very, very key as far as I'm concerned. So that is how we do things differently. I do not want to see an IBC that is seen as a policeman for the elections. Because that, that, is, that is not the work of IBC. It is okay to deliver the elections, but that is not the only work. That is important. Coming back to your second question about the appeal court ruling, I, I feel very happy that this ruling was made about IBC. And the reason why I say is because it now gives us the basis for saying is what has been done by the current commissioners uh, good enough. If I'm appointed, I will ask the members who are there, together with the new members, that we review anything from buying a pin, anything that is related to the coming elections. We must review everything from the beginning and agree on what must be done, and not only done, must be done right. That is my position, and I think uh, I'm sure even the chairman, the current chairman of IBC, would not want to see an election that turns out to be like the one we did last time. No Kenyan, not in the chair, no Kenyan who is in uh, South Mind would an election like the one we saw last time. We'd want to do a good process. We take control of us. We agree. And not only the commissioners. I want to imagine that the managers and the secretariat is part of the process. So, I'd want to establish a way through which the governance issues that are related to the running of the elections from the commission to the management, through the committees, everything is under control and properly managed. That is my view. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, members. <coughs> Mr. Adel, before we did this, you Let me make uh, certain comments. Maybe if you are, in case you are approved, then uh, these are areas that are uh, of concern that may interest you. One, you may think or do you think that uh, Voter education and elections should be included in the school curriculum. Right, civic education covering elections and voting, perhaps right from the primary school all the way through, should be part of uh, curricula to inculcate some sense of responsibility in terms of uh, voter education. And two, 
I didn't hear you mention any experience in the area of procurement. But uh, year in, year out, IBC and election bodies have been visited by scandals and some haphazard way of uh, conducting procurement. <coughs> Maybe that is an area you may comment or consider to improve on. And then uh, there is a comment I made uh, to your colleague who just left. But I may also perhaps comment on it. Kenyans have been played to culture that carries elections year to year, day to day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, campaigns. And this stratifies economic growth and day to day lives of the people, endless campaigns. Do you think steps should be taken to legislate, curtail these against, uh, penalties, confine them, depending on what type of elections, <coughs> like bylaws through timeline? You say if it's presidential, you say maybe three months before the event, or other elections. I'm just uh, saying this. Do you think it's high time we did this? And lastly, let me perhaps uh, give you a little guidance if you are taken. There is a doctrine, I think lawyers here know it, called uh, estoppel and uh, acquiescence. That uh, if you believe a set scenario is proper, in law, you give a return that it is proper, you cannot just wake up after some prolonged period and then say now this was again improper or illegal, when you have already carried there, uh, right? You carry your mandate, assuming that this is the way, and people take it, and then abruptly you come tomorrow capriciously and say you are not a member of this body, and all a while, even in corporate governance, you've been a director throughout, you have made decisions, the member of parliament has legislated, then you come and say, oh, you are not, because of uh, your elections was not properly carried out, or that. Maybe it's called a presence or a estoppel, in a way which is called upon at times to guide our affairs so that you don't just uh, capriciously disrupt the lives of the people. You may comments on those, you may reserve your comments, put it as uh, your guidelines. Yeah. Okay, th th thank you, Chair. Let me start with the last one. And the reason how I want to relate that one to the... Who rams and other things. Uh, the reason how I want to relate that to what Honorable Junet Muhammad has asked about uh, the ruling of the appeal court. I believe in whole taking responsibility of my actions and the actions that we may do with the committee. So I want to tell this committee that we will take full responsibility and the full credit on otherwise for the action of IBC. Because if we know we are doing the wrong thing, then there's no point. So I want to say that uh, we will not run away from decisions. We will not run away from accepting the responsibility for any action we have, we have taken as a committee. I will want to, that kind of understanding to be within IBC commissioners. So that's, that's what I was talking about. the culture of campaigns. Um, we live in a very interesting country because, like you have rightly put, 
you find that uh, immediately after the elections, maybe your first year, the second year, there's already campaign for the next election. I think there has to be a way through which that has to be regulated. I honestly believe that because it disrupts the development. Even for members of parliament who are heading their, their, their constituencies to implement their projects, even the government for that matter. So I, I actually think and I believe that that should be done. It should be a process because we have learned lessons from the past. We need to regulate those issues. Um, but one or the other you should find that if I go to a Harambe, Mwashimua goes to a Harambe and they donate money, people think that is development. Because that, that actually is donation. But the development of the people is much bigger and deeper than that. So we need to protect the development of this nation from that element. And I would support that uh, change. The other one is um, about the procurement. Kenyan, Kenyan elections are said to be the most expensive in the world. And uh, even you look at the region, it is still very, very, very expensive compared to our neighbors. Uh, I have not done procurement, but I believe there is a way of bringing that down. Uh, probably there are many ways, what I say, of killing a cat. We need to analyze where is our election expensive. Is it the printing of the ballots that is very expensive? Is it the, the ballot paper? It has security features. We are told several security features. Uh, as much as we protect the integrity of, of, of uh, the election, is it by making that election expensive? Probably that is not the way. Um, are there other issues allowing, surrounding it? So the procurement, and I would want to, 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 to engage the commissioners and the managers as we if I'm appointed to look at that process from the beginning to the end and see where, which areas we can reduce the cost. And that is key as well. About the voter education, to be, included, uh, to be included in the curriculum. Yes, about the voter education, including in the curriculum. Actually, that would be a very beautiful thing to do. And not only the voter education, the values, national values, should be part and parcel of what we should be educating our children. Because I have seen that by the time the students are leaving the school, primary, secondary, they go to university, by the time they are looking, coming out of the university, they probably have no idea about what happened. It is important that we include some of those things in our curriculum, very early, and so that we can also have people uh, who are willing to vote and vote for value. So I would support that, and I would really want to work with the curriculum development to see whether it can work. Thank you. Then, uh, you don't have to comment on their acquiescence and all that. That is okay. But uh, there is a member, I don't know whether he's interested in any. Uh, Kaluma, Mwashima Kaluma. We want to release uh, Mr. Waderi. Do you have any comment? Yes, Chair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make it quick. Uh, I don't have any question from uh, Wanderi. I wish him well as we consider his uh, nomination. Okay, thank you. None at all, Chair. Uh, I wish Mr. Wanderi as we proceed to consider his nomination. Okay. Uh, Wanderi, all right, uh, we will release you. you. Our decision, the committee will uh, deliberate on uh, your suitability or otherwise and I communicate the decision to the House. It will be public uh, knowledge when, uh, when the committee and the House 
besides on uh, your sweet ability. Thank you very much for coming. May I thank all the honorable yes. members for this opportunity. I hope you find me suitable and we promise to deliver a credible election if I am in the, in the, in the, in the commission. Thank you very much. Hello. We are, we are ready to go. Yeah, we will try to be as quick as possible. Yes. Who is coming next? ule umamuzi ndio chukua kumusubadi ulikuwa wa makosa na nyutia kusema la kweli haukuwa umamuzi wa busara kapa